<laughs> uh, so um, there's a lot of things that were discussed in the prior session about uh, semantics over FS tests and idealistic sort of stuff. Um, yes, we can strive to generalize things into FS tests. I think that's a different question, and I think that we likely can get some agreement to that, but I don't want to focus on that. Um, I want to focus more on where we're at with KDOPS and what we're doing, what people have been working on, what's their uh, new features, and how to jump in and, uh, and address questions. So the variability is already supported. You guys were talking about that, that's already there. Can you get community to agree on variability? Yes, it's there. We support different file systems, we support different workflows, FS test, block tests, CXL, you name it. So that's their proven concept. You basically can already do that. Virtualization is already there. We support different virtualization technologies, different cloud environments as well. Uh, so let's just go over some of the stuff that I did want to talk about because I, I, I just re wanted to recap that because I, there's a lot of things that you guys mentioned earlier. It's like, it's already done, we have it. Um, the community has grown considerably, so um, one of the biggest changes was the finding a better home or tooling for uh, using virtualization. Um, and we were using Vagrant. Vagrant was dead code, essentially, and that was a, a posed risk in, towards the future. So thank you, Jeff, for doing all that work, because holy shit, that is a lifesaver. Um, so basically, um, GuestFS is now the default, too. Uh, so if you're using virtualization, we use GuestFS. One of the nice things about GuestFS is that we get to also do customizations on the image so we can speed up uh, what we want on provisioning for each of the guests. So for instance, um, we target uh, both cloud and also local virtualization. So for each file system uh, MKFS configuration, we essentially launch a different guest. Um, what we currently do, for instance, is we have the kernel installed on each guest. We build it on the host, we install it on each of the guests. What's likely going to be the next step of improv um, improvements here is to basically just uh, customize the guest image once and basically just boot into the guest on each of those uh, test sections. Uh, that should reduce test time considerably as well. Um, since we also support cloud, there was that whole Terraform you know, migration over to OpenTofu. Big question was whether or not that works. Yes, it does work, supports there. All, all you have to do is just provide a symlink to OpenTofu and you basically get the cloud uh, um, uh, work uh, options with Terraform working with OpenTofu. Um, for those that are working with OCI right now, uh, is Chan down here? Yeah. So I think there's some already some folks who are already using OCI with a simple uh, credentials-based authentication mechanism. So I think that that might work. The idea here is that right now you have a kconfig options for all these different parameters that you need to uh, specify for how it is that you're going to authenticate for OCI. I think actually, Derek, don't you have some sort of file for that? Um, Okay, so perfect. So AWS works that way, and it's 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 a breeze basically to ramp up with uh, AWS uh, for OCI. Then I think we just need to add support for that option, and when it's there, basically just dump all your credentials there. That would make ramp up a lot easier. It seems like we're getting a lot of benefit from OCI, given that it also has ARM support. So you know, at least that's how we used it for testing LBS and, and confirming that uh, large block sizes works also correctly, and so no regressions there. Um, there's a shitload of all other contributions uh, that I think perhaps a lot of people are not aware of, so I just wanted to ask some, fo some of those folks if they can just share that and also then now open up the floor for general dialogue conversations, you know, of what people wanted to talk about here too. First question, where is the wiki? I mean, you had videos I saw that you posted on YouTube, I think, of this. Uh, so there's a, um, a homepage uh, for the project. Did, have you seen that? I mean, when I Googled it, I came up with two things. I came up with your, I think, a YouTube video of you presenting it and a GitHub thing with a readme and the GitHub thing mm -hmm. when I Googled it. But I didn't see. Yeah, yeah so, so I, I didn't so you check there. There's a there's a huge number of sessions. There's also 
hand-holding videos that I put up for people specifically to help ramp up with uh, KDevOps. Um, one of the things that um, is there as well is basically the scraping of uh, all the bugs that we found for our baseline testing for LBS. So this takes a lot of work, huge amount of work. So yes, the expunges are a pain in the ass and so forth. And, Tracking, you know, um, each each test is a pain in the ass as well. But finding commonalities between the failures and stack traces to identify a specific issue that actually takes more work. So one of the ideas I guess I wanted to float around here too was I, I had read um, that a long time ago there was a QR QR code implementation support for uh, crashes. I think that. We don't necessarily need something like that, but something like it that gives us a, a pattern for a, a type of trace would be very useful because then we can have uh, using automation scrape and detect that you're getting same same crash instead of tr just trying to eyeball it. For instance, that would be much easier for automation. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure yet why that patch was not eventually merged. I think Dirk had. Uh, do anyone here recall that? No. So. My understanding was that there was a patch to provide a QR code for crashes. Uh, I'm not sure why it was rejected, but I think that that would help for automation and trying to automate this, for instance. Um, so for those that are not a fan of expunges, yes, they're useful, they can do this, for instance. And these are real bugs, right, real crashes. In fact, some of them are really complex, right? So I think some of them are still being worked on. There was even two MM bugs, too. They were really hard to reproduce. Um, so we... One of the goals is to eventually get to a point where we can automate this, right? Um, that would be really nice for each file system. The other thing I should mention too is that, yes, there's a lot of work that goes into individual file systems, but that's because you're working on it. Um, there's enough room to basically add support for different file systems as well. There's a lot of room to add support for different workflows. We won't just do it for you, you know? Basically, it's there so that way you can leverage if it's useful to you. If you have the use case to uh, leverage large systems for virtualization or cloud environment, then this might be useful for you. Um, so I'd invite you to check it out, but we can't just do everything for you. We're doing it mainly for XFS because we're obviously working in LBS and XFS is the first file system that we're supporting. Eventually, we would like to help support large blocks and different file systems to help obviously test different file systems, but I think BcacheFS would be next, right? So that's different. It has different test runners. We, we would have to evaluate with Kent wh whether or not we want to integrate NIC support, for instance, or just run through KDOPS, you know, um, um, uh, Kent's test runner as well. Um, anyway, so I wanted to open up the floor for things that folks wanted to discuss. Anything else um, other than just, you know, random questions? Does anyone want to share some of the stuff that they already implemented or what they're using this for? I'll go ahead and, uh, I'll go ahead and point out, too, that we've got a pretty good, ro ro pretty robust NFS testing infrastructure in this now, too. So we've been able to, it will basically stand up a server, stand up a bunch of clients, and then run tests against that. So we can do, you know, hammer the server pretty hard. And I believe uh, Scott Mayhew was working on some, uh, some infrastructure for Samba, too. And him and Paulo Alcantari were working on that, too. So for SMB testing as well. So we, there's you know, this sort of model of you know, the way KDevOps works is actually works pretty well for client server type setup. Like, I, I imagine the Ceph guys could do this, too, if they really wanted to, you know. So, as a maintainer, right, we, it's a huge time suck testing, but it's really important. This is incredibly exciting. I was, ex what Jeff's saying is very exciting. But let's take an example from, like, two days ago, right? So, Christian put some stuff in, Linus Lena, picked up a patch set. It looks like it has about five bugs that affect me, right? So one of them is a crash, okay? Is there a way we can auto-diagnose crashes, call stacks, line of code, that kind of stuff better? I mean, we, we figured it out and we were able to isolate it, but it was like, okay, it was in a function, we knew which function it was, but we didn't know which line of code. There's probably ways that we could auto-diagnose the line of code of the crash, that's one. Second was a lock, well, two different types of lock, um, lock dependency problems. The third was a data corruption in a target file. 
and the fourth was intermittent, and the fifth was a performance problem. So it was 100 times slower because of something or other. So those are five. This is a real example from two days ago. So we had a crash, need the call stack line of code. We had a 100x performance on some of the tests, slower. We had a two lock dependency issues. Um, and um, we had a data corruption. So obviously, you know, different patches for different things, but it was, it was probably, a, you know, man, maybe 10, 12 hours of work to get the first three out of the way. Is there any way that for those type of scenarios, a real example here, we could save developer time with any of this for that example from a couple of days ago? So um, there was a session uh, earlier today by Song and Paul about um, integration with patchwork. Now at least we have a recipe for that. Uh, one of the next goals that I would per, uh, really like to uh, strive to is use a simple uh, file system, simpler than XFS, you know, is what I mean really. Um, get a baseline and work with the community on automation of tests for patchwork for that file system um, and start there. Um, the target file system I'm thinking of right now um, is TempFS, given that it's a bit simpler. We already have a baseline for that, and we're also doing uh, large folio development on that. So we have an interest in that as well. So you know, it makes sense to leverage the testing that we're putting into and to help automate reporting issues. There is support already for uh, easily being able to cherry pick patches. Uh, basically, since we have uh, used uh, kconfig, you basically have uh, dev configs that you can define for your file system. So all you really need to do now is just specify make dev config your dash your file system and then your profile that you want. Then you specify b4 dash thread ID and then basically that, that'll let you spawn testing for that specific b4 thread. Um, so what we need after that is the collection of the crashes and making sense of that. We have a team that is starting to ramp up and working on that. It'll take a while, I think, before we get to the point where we have this completely nailed down. But I, I suspect that we can also leverage a lot of the existing test runners that already have some of this, you know, like Ted's or uh, Kent's. Um, so we want to get there, for sure. So. Uh, right now, a lot of this is basically a collection of crashes and then manual introspection. So there is a separate repository all, also for each uh, test run that's done who wants to opt in to upload this to the community so that way they can verify any of the tests that, that were run and also all the failures. It's now in a separate repository because we used to collect all the test results into KDOPS itself. It, was, it proved to be too big. Now it's, it's, it's its own Git tree, and the results are stashed differently in a separate Git tree. Um, so basically, we, it's going to take some time to get there, but I think that we will. And we have enough motivation to try to automate that, for sure. So um, nothing there for you yet, but you know, basically, you know, um, take a look to see if it might already help you. you know? The automation aspect, I think, that really the, um, uh, the goal really is to try to integrate with patchwork, right? For each, each subsystem maintainer or file system maintainer then to decide whether or not they want that. And also get something more sensible like this too, right? Which describes, you know, the actual issues. Uh, I wanted to do a little bit of um, horn tooting and a little bit of uh, discussion of features. Yeah. So first, um, I want to say uh, Jeff didn't mention some things he contributed that are pretty key. One is uh, uh, it adds a, a certificate authority on the control node so that we can to do TLS testing. And that's not just for NFS, it would also be for SMB, of course. Um, or, or anybody else who, who might need uh, self-signed certs automatically created. Um, Scott Mayhew added uh, support for bringing up a Kerberos server, so those aspects of the file systems uh, that support Kerberos can be tested as well. Um, and I'm adding uh, an iSCSI target so that we can test file systems on iSCSI LUNs, um, namely for NFSD, that means uh, PNFS block. Um, uh, now for the topic that I'd kind of like to discuss, you touched on it right at the end of your comments there. Um, I think we need a way of collecting results. 
um, and providing a dashboard. Um, Scott Mayhew has been looking at something that uh, stuffs XFS test results into a database that, and displays it in a nice little table. Okay. Um, that's kind of nice. It's not, that's not web friendly. It's just an ASCII table. It's better than anything we have with right, right now, which is just terrible. Um, but I was thinking as I was listening to the previous uh, session and to this one, I think FS test is not the only um, workflow where we want to collect results and publish them uh, on, a, on a website. Because uh, I've also added, I think, what, four new workflows? One for Git yes. regression, one for LTP, um, one for the NFS test, and one for, and, and Jeff added PyNFS. I didn't add that one. He did that one. Um, and I would like to see uh, some way of collecting the results from those runs and putting them somewhere. Um, I think it was really smart to move them out of the, the KDAP out of source code tree that didn't seem like a very uh, wieldy way of working with those results. Uh, I would like to see some, some way of putting those into a, a some kind of uh, secure database on the, on the network that can be displayed uh, on a website. Yeah, that, that would be fantastic. Uh, right right now, they're basically just, it's its own repository. So uh, for those that haven't seen it, it's basically this Git tree. Um, and basically, it's just a series of tarballs that you basically can extract the data from. It's just huge, though. So for each separate run, you would basically store the entire archive there. We used to have all these tarballs present in the KDOS Git tree. That just didn't scale. So. Uh, it's gone. We we have a fresh new Git repository, and all these results now are in a separate repo. Um, in terms of trying to unify this with other uh, test um, uh, uh, runners, this discussion keeps coming up. And um, and no, no, it, it, we tried. I tried, and basically, you know, basically said, all right. Well, the folks said, well. We need something. Okay, it's there. Now we have these. And then it's like, all right, where, where, where can we share them? I, I didn't hear anything back. So it's like, well, we can just meet, keep moving forward then. That's all we can do, right? So we have a repo where we're storing them. They're all public. You can get grep for stuff. You know. So I'm not sure what else we can do. So in, in terms of like maybe unifying, going back to some of the other things that I was hoping we, we <laughs> would avoid, yes, we can bring some of these things to FS tests, but that's an uphill battle. We need people here to want that. I don't want to f do that fight. I'd rather do the development, lead by example, and let people decide what the fuck they want to do. <laughs> so incredibly useful stuff. One of the things I was thinking about is that you know, most maintainers are pretty obsessive about understanding what FS tests work. Sometimes about other things as well, right? LTP or, in my case, we I think I added 10 of the Git functional tests to run over SMB mounts. And so I basically imported Git tests into my XFS tree. But, you know, we have different tests that we were obsessive about. And I think most of us keep tables. Maintainers or trusted people keep tables of, okay, here's the 770 whatever XFS tests, and here's it's skipped. We have you know a table that sets up you know is it is it skipped? Is it valid? Is it a two debug later? We don't understand why it works or requires this feature or require a VFS change or whatever. So we we categorize all the tests, and weirdly we should tag. Okay, this works in 5.14 or later. This works in 6.3 or later. This works in 6.7 or later. Um, you know we added what three new three new IOCTLs. Um, in 6.9, right? I don't know how many file systems support that, right? I mean, at some point we'll need an XFS test for that and we'll say, you know, 6.9 and later. But what I'm wondering about is, is there a way that we as maintainers can make your job and other testers' jobs easier by having an official sort of, here's the test, here's what we view as the status. It works on 6.9 or later. This one isn't relevant. This one works. This one we need to debug. Is there a way to do that so you have the official view of what should work for a particular file system? Yeah, I mean, hang on, right? So if the issue is that some ioctal or some feature is simply not present in an older kernel, uh, the FS test should just be skip. configured to skip it, okay. right? So, you know, I think the only time we really want to have marks of, you know, 
this test is failing is for genuine bugs. Um, and usually it's for the stable kernels where for whatever reason it's been decided that it is too painful or too risky to backport the fix to a 510 kernel, for example, right? And I can certainly see where sharing that information in some form uh, would be useful. Um, I think the challenge is, uh, you know, when we talk about sharing FS test results, I think it's much more useful to think about it not in the abstract, but what is the specific goal that we want to enable? And because what tests we need to share to achieve a particular goal, like say, there are a whole bunch of people who really care about 6.1 LTS kernels, right? And so solving the problem for those people who want to test LTS kernels is a much easier subset than the generic, let's share all FS test results in a way that we hopefully will be useful for some use case, right? So I, I think if we want to make progress on it, let's set concrete goals, find some set of people who are interested in that specific concrete goal, and then see how we can achieve it. Because I think that that's the best way to make forward progress. To, to be kind of precise in my example, about one-fourth of the XFS tests that fail, well, about a, many of the tests are skipped, as you say. But like last year, what did we do? We added shutdown to my code, right? So sh is the test going to fail without it, or is it going to skip? About a, about a fourth of the time, the test will fail for some things, various features, right? What I'm saying is that there's very, very many cases I've run into, maybe a fourth of them, where instead of skip, it's a fail. It's not a big deal. I, as a maintainer, sure, I know this. But it might be harder for people who are doing testing to understand, oh, that's not a fail. That's a skip. So I'm, what I'm trying to do is, what can we as maintainers do to make it easier to run these things for people who aren't familiar with tempfs or nfs or smb or whatever it is so it sounds like people are already doing that work and i think that you should look at the repo for the work that they're already doing so you may, you may already leverage some of the work that they've done 